Welcome to this tutorial brought to you by River City Graphics. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make reflections within After Effects. So to get started we're going to open up After Effects. And here is the effect we're going to be creating today. You can see we have a nice fancy reflection underneath our shiny text. If you want to know how to actually create this text animation, I have a tutorial on kinetic typography within After Effects you should check out to um, find out how to make that. But what we're going to be creating today is this reflection underneath and making the text shiny. So I'm just going to take and open up that file where I created this original animation. So I'm just going to open a project and we'll get that opened up and then we'll take and go to file save as and save it as something completely different so that um, we don't mess up our original uh, file. Okay, so I'll just save it as reflection and save it. So now the next step, um, which is probably where you guys will jump in, is actually taking and putting everything that you want to reflect on one layer or in one um, pre-comp. So I'm just going to take and close up all these text layers, select them all, and then go up to layer and it's off screen but it's at the very bottom and pre-compose. So then this box will come up and I'm just going to name it animation. Okay. So now basically it's taken all of those layers and put them into one layer so we have everything that we want to reflect on one layer. So once you have that done what we're going to do is take and add in a black background. So I'm just going to go to layer, new, solid, make it black and comp size and click OK. I can drag that to the bottom. Now since our text was black we won't see anything so we need to open up our pre-comp which in order to do that you can just double click on the little movie icon next to it in your project window. So that'll open this up and we need to take and select each of these pieces of text with our character uh, palette open and just turn them to white. Okay. So what this is going to do is allow us to actually see that back in our main composition. So then I'm just going to go forward because in that tutorial we had this little tutorials piece drop down. So we'll make sure we get that white as well. So once we've done that we can close this pre-comp because um, we don't really need it. We just need the layer back in our regular composition. So once we're back in here we can see everything. In order to make this a little easier for ourselves I'm just going to cut it before that other text drops down. So I'm just going to cut it right here at um, about 315. Select the layer, hold Alt and hit the right bracket key in order to trim. Okay, so now we have just this and that should be good. So now what we need to do is take and scale this text down. So I'm just going to scale the entire pre-composition. You can see that it still retains its animation within there. So that's another benefit to pre-comping. And so we can just scale this down and we want to make it a, about big enough so that we can fit two of them on the screen. Okay, so I'm just holding Shift and using the corner points in order to scale. So once we have that done, what we need to do is actually make a duplicate of this layer. So I'm just going to, with the layer selected, hit Control D on my keyboard, and it's going to make a duplicate of the layer. So now underneath that, we'll just drag that down while holding Shift, then right click on this duplicate and go to Transform and then Flip Vertical. So that's going to turn that upside down and then we'll just butt it up right up against there. Um, you might want to leave a little bit of a gap especially if you have a font where letters are coming down. Um, you just want them to have basically where they're pretty close to touching. So this is what's going to actually make our reflection. So the way that we're going to add the reflection in is by using an effect and that's going to be linear wipe. So over in our effects and presets we're going to type in linear and it should pull up linear wipe underneath transition. So I'm going to take that and we want to drag it onto our um, bottom layer. Now in order to make sure that we keep this organized we want to make sure that we name this. So on this top animation layer um, which is the bottom piece, the upside down one, I'm going to hit enter and we'll name this reflection. Okay. So now we want to take and drag our linear wipe to our reflection layer. And the way that this works um, is it basically takes um, and allows you to create a gradient or cut away from your text. So you can see that we can cut away from it right there. It's obviously not the right angle, but that's kind of how this works. So before we get to do that, um, I want to bring up one little problem with using pre-comps and after effects. You can see right here, um, we have a tad bit of an issue. Um, you can see that our text starts to get cut off when it comes to the edge. Now in the original file um, back in the previous tutorial, it, it basically goes off screen. So when you scale it down, it doesn't have that data outside of there. And you'll see that it also does it when it swings around um, the other side as well. So um, the problem with that, um, the way that we can fix that is by turning on this little sun icon on these uh, layers. So both on the animation and the reflection layer, I'm just going to hit the little sun icon. And now you can see that it's fixed that. And um, they're not really crossing over each other anymore as they were. And you can see it even when it goes outside of the screen, 
all of the data is still there. So um, the reason that we need to do that now is because if you were to put the linear wipe on there and then do it afterwards, then all of your settings for the angle would be um, in reverse. So we're just gonna do it beforehand. So now what we need to do is we'll just scale this to fit. We need to actually get our gradient going on this bottom one so that we can get that reflection uh, rendered out. So what we're going to do is get our transition completion and take and put that probably at about 50%. Now you can see that that's obviously in the wrong direction. So we'll take our angle and we'll put that at zero. Okay, now we can't see anything and the reason for that is because um, it's a very sharp cut originally. And so what we need to do is turn up our feathering and I'm gonna put that at about probably around 300, 380, somewhere around 380 would probably work out pretty well. Um, you can see we have a nice gradient going here. Now the last thing that we need to do on this is go to our reflection layer, hit T, and we'll turn down the opacity to something around, I don't know, maybe 20% or so. That might be a little too much. We'll probably put it up around 30, maybe 32. And you can see that it starts to fade out. Now, remember that we're looking at this from a distance, so when you're looking at it 100%, you can see the reflection pretty well. Um, again, this is just your personal preference. Um, you can adjust all of these settings. So now there is one thing. Um, some people, when they do reflections, um, they don't like to have what's called drop-off. Now, I do prefer drop-off, and that's what you see right here. Basically, in the reflection, you'll see that it tapers off into black. Um, you can see that it's kind of fading out. Um, some people prefer there to be um, the rather than um, not having it drop off um, because they claim like when you're looking in a mirror you don't really see drop off because it's directly next to it. It's kind of more in the distance. Um, so it's really personal preference but if you don't want drop off just put this to zero and you'll see that it basically eliminates um, any of that fading away. So since I prefer that, that's what we're going to be rolling with in this tutorial. So um, now that we have that, basically we are halfway done with the effect. Um, and the reason I say that is we've created the reflection. looks pretty good. Um, the only problem is that it doesn't really look like this is a reflective environment. You kind of see the reflection. That's really the only thing that gives you the impression that there should be a reflection there. So this is the step that a lot of people kind of forget about. You want to actually make it look like there should be a reflection there and then the audience will buy it a lot more. Um, so what you're going to do is first we're just going to start with putting a little bit of a glow on our um, River City graphics text like we had in the previous uh, or in the example I showed at the beginning of the tutorial. So we'll come to animation and in order to add this we're going to come to effects and presets and we're going to type in glow. So in our stylize, we'll just take and drag that to the animation layer. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is take my threshold and we'll turn it down some, probably around 40, 42-ish. Then we'll take um, our radius and we'll take and put that probably at about 25. Once we, let's go actually set our colors first because it's easier to see the glow once you have set your colors. So I'm going to set color A and we'll just put that as blue so we can get the same thing as our demo. So we'll make that blue, maybe a little darker, and then we'll set B as also blue, um, just so that we have a consistent glow. So once we have that done, what we need to do is actually take where it says original colors and change that to A and B colors in order to actually get it to switch to that blue, because otherwise it's just the original colors of the text will be um, what's creating the glow. So now that we have that done, you can see we have a nice blue um, glow coming off of there. Um, you can put this around 22, 25. Again, this is personal preference and it depends on the size of your actual object. So once we have that done, I'm gonna leave glow intensity at one, um, the glow operation at add, and then we'll leave this at triangle ABA. Um, so you can see that now we kind of have a glow coming off of our text and that's going to um, make it look like it should be kind of casting light and that it might actually be in a reflective environment. So the way that we're going to enhance this is actually by taking and throwing on another glow. So I'm going to take the first glow, select it, hit control D, Okay, it's going to uh, make this really, really bright on the glow, uh, which is not what we want. We want this to be more of a background kind of glow, like say that this was sitting on top of something and there was a wall behind it, then it would kind of be casting a bluish light in the background. So that's what we're going to be kind of trying to simulate. So I'm going to take the threshold on glow two. Again, this is underneath glow one, so this should be the order. You can drag these around. Glow two should be underneath. I'll take the threshold and turn that all the way up to 100 and grab the radius and turn that all the way up to say a thousand um, just as high as it'll go we'll leave this one on one for the intensity um, again a b colors and this is what we're actually going to change here for color looping um, we want it to be on sawtooth b and then a caret symbol a 
and the reason that we're doing this is because um, we might get banding within our gradients and what banding is is basically whenever you see a gradient that it doesn't really render out quite right um, it takes and puts those circles of color and it kind of looks like um, a bullseye rather than a smooth gradient from one color to the next um, and we don't want that because it looks terrible um, so I found that using this sawtooth B to A um, on glows actually takes and eliminates some of that banding so we're just going to take and use that uh, we might actually turn down the radius on the glow because it's a little bright now okay so now the next thing that we need to do is actually take and um, we're probably going to need to put in a gradient in the background so that we can get a little bit further of the glow because the glow needs something to actually cast onto besides just black if we actually want it to show up pretty well so I'm going to take and add in a new solid so layer new solid we'll just make it black and we'll leave it on top so that we can see what we're doing and then we can move it to the back later on so I'm just going to come over to effects and presets and we're going to create a gradient and the way to do that is by tr um, searching for ramp and so we'll take and under generate ramp drag that onto our black solid that's on the top we'll change the ramp shape to a radial ramp and you can see now that it's kind of casting from the top and this is kind of what we're looking for so I'm going to take this top part and where it says start color this black we're going to take and select a light blue so we're looking for something probably a little bit closer to the teal side. Get the blue. All right, and then under end color, we're going to select black so that you can see that it really fades out um, into the black, which we already have. So now what I can take and do is hit T, and we need to turn the opacity down to probably somewhere around 30-ish, maybe even a little lower. Um, we'll probably put it around 30. And you can see that now we have a pretty nice glow. Um, now the thing that I want to do with this is actually take and put this behind um, or have it stretch all the way. You can see that it kind of ends right here, the glow does. So we want it to go the whole width, um, or at least I kind of have the preference of it doing that. So we'll just scale this out a little bit horizontally and now you can see it kind of casts all the way to the side. Now um, this is still on top of our text so we need to take and drag this down right above our background black layer. Okay, and since the opacity is at 30, then it's going to be casting onto black, and it will look okay. And we might actually turn that down maybe a little more, um, maybe 27 or so, and that's starting to look pretty good. So now you can see that we really kind of sell the actual effect a little bit more um, because we've put it in this environment that will actually be able to um, kind of really, really push that it's actually shining. Okay, so one of the things that I wanted to mention real quick um, is that the reason that I took and put the glow, the bigger glow, the one that was a thousand pixels um, of spread or uh, radius onto the actual text instead of just making it more intense in the middle on the background was because when it actually takes and turns, you can see that the it, when there's more text over here for graphics, you can see that it's more blue over here because that glow follows that text around. Um, so that's just kind of a nice effect um, and a reason to take and put it on the text rather than on the background. Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to do, um, it's kind of a little bit um, of an easy thing to do and that is to actually add a little bit of shine to our text and the way to do that is to actually put on just a little bit of a lens flare. So I'm going to take and go up to layer, new, and we'll add an adjustment layer. Then on that adjustment layer we're going to go to effect and then we're going to go to generate, and you can probably search this over in your effects and presets, but I'm going to go to lens flare. All right, so you'll see we have a nice lens flare. This is pretty big. Um, you do have a couple different types in here under lens type. I think I'm going to probably go with the 105 millimeter prime just because it's kind of a little bit bluer. You can color these, but just kind of straight out of the box, this one seems to work the best for the style that I've already established. Now, if you do have a, another... Um, Lens flare, lens flare pack such as um, the video copilot um, optical flares. That one's pretty awesome. Um, you can get way more options and you can change around these circles and the colors and the distance and how wide the thing actually shines and everything. So I would recommend checking that out. Um, but just from the stock one, you can get some pretty good effects So um, for free within After Effects. So I'm going to take and put that up here in the top corner of River City Graphics and then really turn down the flare brightness. This is kind of going to be an accent for me. Um, it's not really going to be an overpowering um, flare. You can take and change it. I'll show you later um, what that actually looks like. But I'm just going to leave it around 5 just so it kind of shines a little bit right off of that corner. Um, and so the problem with this is that we need to actually have it follow the corner around when it starts to flip. 
So you can see that it looks good all the way up until there. Um, but then once it starts to move, then we're going to have a problem. So I'm going to get to the frame right before it moves and hit the keyframe on flare center. This is where you actually move the flare around. If you were to take this layer and drag it around, the flare would stay right where it's at because the flare center is still at this point. So you actually move the flare by adjusting the center. So now once the text starts to move, I can take and just grab this little crosshair and keep it moving to the river. Now, um, you might try and do something else. Um, you might actually try and track the text, but most of the text is actually white and blue, so it's not really too much difference, and that's what you really need for a good track, and you can't parent it because um, this text is moving within its own box, so there's not really individual pieces to actually move it to. So you can just do it by hand. Um, you can actually move it quite a bit forward um, before you actually have to move the point and you can go back and tweak it up later. So you can see I'm almost done here, um, and I've only been doing this for about 30 seconds or so. So I'm just going to keep moving this forward, just kind of rotoscoping, not really rotoscoping, but just individually keyframing this um, flare to the corner. Now you probably will have to touch it up once you scan through there because there'll be, there's always a spot that it seems to get off. So once it gets all the way back and it stops moving, um, you're just going to leave it so that it doesn't actually move around. So now if we kind of look at this, you see it gets off a little bit there, just drag it back. Um, pretty straightforward. But for the most part, it seems like it's holding on to that corner pretty well. If it gets off, just take and drag it back on there. And we have a pretty good effect there. Um, you can take some more time and actually take and move that forward, or and kind of fancy that up. but for the most part it's a glow and it stays on that corner pretty well. Um, again you can take and move that so that it stays exactly on that spot but I don't want to um, waste all your time in this tutorial so that looks pretty good for the effect. So now um, that we have that on there you can see what it would look like if we actually took and turned up the flare brightness. Um, it really does kind of add a little bit more shine to it and you see that you can these circles out here get a little bit bigger um, and it looks pretty cool um, but it's a little bit too much for what I actually wanted. I just wanted it to be more subtle so I just left it around five just kind of a little shine on the corner um, just to give that idea that there is some light and this is some shiny text. So um, what I'm going to do is turn this to full screen fit this to the window and then I can hit the space bar and it's going to take and render everything out and we're going to be able to take a look at what we made. Now you see that this stuff does last after here so we can actually take and at the very end of our clips take our black solid um, that's got the gradient and select also our lens flare hold alt and again trim this and for whatever reason sometimes it leaves one extra frame so you can trim that off so now all of this will just stop at one spot and then I'm going to take and get my work area here by dragging in this little yellow object and basically just trim that to here so that whenever it replays it doesn't go all the way to the end it just stops right here and starts it to replay. So now we can take a look at what we actually made which make, make sure that your playhead is within here otherwise it's just going to play into infinite blackness. Okay so it's rendering out here and then it'll go at real speed which is a little quick. I never ended up fixing that animation completely, but you can see that the reflection looks pretty sweet. Uh, it actually looks like it should be in that environment. We have a nice shine going on. We have a nice little optical flare. Um, the optical flare little other piece spins down here if you can see that on YouTube. So it looks pretty cool. Um, so this is probably the best way that I've found to do reflections in here. That linear wipe um, really does a good job of creating the effect. Um, and it seems to um, work out pretty nicely. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. hope you guys um, learned some stuff. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment because I do have a new video tutorial coming out every week. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.